A man whose conviction was overturned nearly three years ago was released last week from a Florida prison after spending half his life behind bars. But Cross Crossley Green's freedom may only be temporary. Erin Moriarty has been covering this case for 48 hours for over two decades, and her team was there when Green was set free. I want to thank God. I want to thank God that I'm standing here today as a free man. On Crossley Green's first full day of freedom, even a press conference under a giant tree is special. Something I haven't stood up under in 30 some years. In 1990, Green was convicted of killing Charles Flynn, a 22 year old man found shot in a Florida citrus grove. I didn't kill that young man. Green's attorneys say he is a victim of a racial hoax, wrongly blamed after Flynn's ex-girlfriend Kim Halleck called 911 and told them a black man shot Flynn. The black guy stepped out with a gun and I heard about five or six gunshots. Halleck picked then 31-year-old Crosley Green out of this photo lineup. Something is not ringing true. It just It was just a gut feeling that it didn't feel right. Sergeant Diane Clark and patrolman Mark Rixey, now retired from the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, were first on the crime scene and say they have never believed Kim Halleck's story. I don't believe a word she says. But then prosecutor Christopher White says he did believe her. I don't see how there's anything here concrete to tell anybody that Kim Halleck lied. Still, Rixey and Clark went to White with their suspicions. I told him I thought she did it. White took notes, but never turned them over to Green's defense attorneys. In 2018, those notes led a federal judge to overturn Crosley Green's conviction. When his conviction was overturned, what did you think would happen? Man, I, I thought my brother would be home. But the state of Florida appealed, and Crosley was kept behind bars, waiting for nearly three years for a decision from the Court of Appeals. And then last week, worried about Crosley's health during the pandemic, his attorneys, Gene Thomas and Keith Harrison, convinced the federal judge to allow Crosley to wait at home with his family. He's home now, but that could change. He could go back, couldn't he? He could. Um, if the Court of Appeals decision uh, comes down uh, against him, um, he would likely go back to prison. It's, it's a real possibility. And Aaron joins us now. Aaron, uh, why does Crosley Green's freedom continue to hang in the balance? Oh, Vlad, this has been such a long road, um, uh, in part because his appeal is just pending. He's out only pending his appeal. And if the court, is, as his attorney said, rules against him and reinstates his conviction, then he goes back to prison. And even if the court rules in his favor, it's still not over. Um, Brevard County could decide to retry him. But what's interesting is Crosley Green actually looks forward to a retrial. He's always wanted to uh, really clear his name. And he's such an optimistic man. In the interview that I did with him, um, I said to him, what did it sound like to hear those gates of the prison close behind you? And he said, I wasn't looking behind. I'm only looking forward. <laughs> he's an impressive mm. guy. He's out, but he's currently under house arrest. So what does that mean? Well, he calls it his 12 yards of freedom. So he has an ankle monitor. Uh, he's living with his brother-in-law, uh, the husband of a sister who died while he was in prison. He can only go along the property lines. Um, so he can't go to church, he can't go to the cemetery where his sister Tina is buried unless he gets permission. But his family can come see him, he can't go see them, but, and they are. When I was there, I mean, there were <laughs> dozens of family members there to see him. So what are the chances, Aaron? I know um, you've talked about the, the fact that he's on appeal, but what are the chances that he'll be retired, uh, retried for murder? Well, I think it's going to be very difficult for the state to retry him. There's always that possibility. There's no physical evidence at all that ties him to it. And there's only one witness now, and it's, it's Kim Halleck. Um, so it would really be putting her on the spot as well. She'll have to testify. 
So they could, but I think it's going to be very difficult. And what's so astounding about the fact that there's lack of evidence, supposedly, Crosley Green uh, hijacked the truck and drove it to another place. Everybody else's fingerprints are on that truck. Kim Halleck's, the victims, but Crosley Green's fingerprints are nowhere on that truck. You know, one of the things I love about 48 Hours is that you guys, correspondents, sometimes you have an encyclopedic knowledge of a case because you've been following cases for so long. And in this case, you've been, you've been keeping track for two decades. What was it about his case, you know, two decades ago that really sparked your interest and, and kept 48 Hours, you know, watching how things were unfolding here? Well, both of you have done these these cases for 48 hours, too. We're allowed to do a deep dive. And in 1999, it was clear that there were real problems with this case. The evidence is deeply flawed. Um, but this case is always an example of what his lawyers say is that it's very easy to convict a black man and put him in prison, but very difficult, a very uphill battle to correct that conviction even when the evidence is deeply flawed. And the reason why we put spotlights on cases like this is in Crosley Green's case, one of our hours led to that wonderful team of lawyers that he has now. Um, and also, we uncovered some new evidence. When I interviewed uh, the mm -hmm. victim's father, he described a very different conversation that Kim Halleck had had with him than what she had told the police. Uh, and so it really pointed out some of the inconsistencies in her story. So I think we have an obligation to put a spotlight on these questionable convictions, and there are a lot of them. For every one we do, I worry about the ones we don't know about. Mm, so true. Aaron, thank you very much.